Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about an application of linear first order differential equations. So here I've got a diagram that represents a closed loop circuit. We'll notice that our V here is some sort of supplied voltage, maybe it's a battery, maybe it's a generator, but we're supplying some voltage into this loop here. And our I, of course, is our current that is flowing through the loop. And R is going to be our resistance that's provided by some sort of resistor. And over here we have some sort of inductor. So L is our inductance that we get in the loop. Our V sub R and our V sub L are actually what we call the voltage drop across the resistor and across the inductor, respectively, our resistor here, L for the inductor because L is inductance. So we get some voltage drop across those in the loop. And if we're familiar with any of Kirchhoff's rules for these circuits, we might know about the loop rule that would tell us this supplied voltage minus these voltage drops across the resistor and the inductor need to be zero. In other words, the idea is the sum of the potential differences in the loop should be zero. Looking back at these voltage drop ideas are V sub R and our V sub L. So V sub R, if we think about what Ohm's law tells us, the voltage drop across the resistor should be equal to R times I. And if we explore a little bit into the consequences of Faraday's law, Faraday's law is going to tell us that the voltage drop across the inductor actually is L times di dt. di dt here is a change in current for us. So if we plug these ideas into our equation over there, then we get that V minus Ri minus L di dt is equal to zero. And let's say we move these two terms over to the other side and make them positive, sort of flip this around a bit, we will get L di dt plus Ri equals V, and this is actually a linear first order differential equation. Let's go ahead and look at solving this. So if we have L di dt plus Ri equals V, notice that I is our dependent variable, T is our independent variable, and this as a linear equation is actually not in the normal form. So what we would want to do first, I think, is actually divide everything by L and get it in its normal form, and then we can work this using our integrating factor. So we would end up with di dt plus r over l, and we'll treat those as constants. i is definitely a variable here, because it's changing with respect to time, is equal to v over l. So we get this equation here in its normal form, and now we want to find the integrating factor. So my integrating factor, remember, will be e to the integral of whatever function is in front of my linear variable here. So we have r over l, and remember both of those are constants. dt here tells us we'll be integrating dt. And so if we integrate that constant r over l with respect to t, we get e to the rt over l. So this is our integrating factor. We'll go ahead and multiply the entire equation by that integrating factor e to the rt over l. That'll be times the di dt plus r over li equals v over l. We'll go ahead and do that over here. What I'm going to do is not distribute on the left side like we've done in the rest of our linear equation videos, but I am going to go ahead and multiply out on the right side. So we'll have di dt plus r over l times i on the left. And this would just be v over l times this exponential. So have v over l e to the rt over l. Now, when we integrate, take the antiderivative with respect to t, remember this is a product rule on the left side of i times your integrating factor. So the antiderivative of all of this product rule with respect to t is just going to give us i times the integrating factor. Over here, we'll actually need to work out the antiderivative. I'll put my v over l, my constant there. Let's put that out front. Okay, now if we integrate e to the rt over l, r over l is the constant multiple of t in here. Remember, we'll get the reciprocal of that constant coming out front when we do the antiderivative, but we'll still have that exponential. So we will actually get v over l times the reciprocal of r over l would be l over r e to the rt over l plus c. 
you can see that the L's will reduce to one here, right? So we'll actually get I e to the RT over L is equal to V over R e to the RT over L and then plus our constant. We need to go ahead and divide both sides by e to the rt over l. If we do that, we get i is equal to, notice it will drop off of this term, so we'll get v over r plus c, and I'm dividing by this exponential, so that's actually going to make this e to the negative rt over l. This is our general solution. It's possible you might start with some sort of condition. So when we, you know, close the loop and we activate it, we might say something like perhaps, you know, the current at time equal to zero, we call I sub zero. And so additionally, if you have something like this for this type of circuit, then you can certainly solve for C. We'll go ahead and do that over here. So if I plug in zero for T, that will give me I sub zero for I. So remember this says when T is equal to zero then i will be equal to i sub zero that's what that condition says we'll do that over here so that would be i sub zero is equal to v over r plus c e to the all of this would become zero if t is zero so we would get e to the zero and if i solve this for c this is really c times one right then i would get i sub zero minus v over r is equal to my constant if I take that constant and I put it into my general solution, then I would get I will say as a function of time is going to be V over R plus I sub zero minus V over R E to the negative RT over L. And you could do some things with factoring out V over R if you want with this. We'll just go ahead and leave this as it is. All right, everyone, hopefully this gives you some sort of hints on how to solve your linear differential equations in terms of circuits. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.